Okay, in this step, we need to make a low poly version of this barrel. Right, so what we need to do first of all is make sure that we're not going to accidentally interfere with this one anymore. We're going to add it to a layer and make that layer a reference so that we don't, you know, break anything. So let's have this selected. In your channel box at the bottom, you've got layers. Click on layers and we're going to create layer from selected. So it will put what we have selected into a new layer. And we'll double click on that to give it a name, which will be high poly and save. And then with this, you can do things like turn the visibility on or off. And here you can change it to reference. So now once I deselect it, can't click on it no more because it's reference. So, you know, it's tough. If you ever forget that though, you're like, oh man, can't click on it. Why not? Oh, it's because it's in reference. You know, take, take the R out and it'll be fine. Okay, so now what we need to do is create a brand new shape. So we're going to go with a cylinder. Wicked. Now, importantly, we want to try and get the same number of subdivisions on the axis as we have planks of wood, which will make life a bit easier. So I'm going to change that to 16 because we've got 16 planks of wood. Right, let me just scale this up a bit so we can see what we're working with and I'll just move it up. And what you should be able to see, if I zoom in, is that these aren't quite lined up, there's like an offset, so each one of these is kind of like halfway past the other, if that makes sense. And to fix that, we're just going to rotate it on the y-axis by 11 and a half degrees and they will now match up perfectly, which makes our job a little bit easier. Okay, so what we'll do next is try and match the height. So I'm going to get um, vertices, I think. So I'm going to get my top row of verts, and then I'm going to press and hold V on my keyboard, which will snap to vertex, and then I'm going to click to move up, and I want that to go as high as it will possibly go, like so. And then same for my bottom row. I'm going to hold V, I'm going to move that down like that. And that will just mean that the height is absolutely perfect, or it definitely should be. They should now match up, which is really good. The next thing we know is to get the curvature as we want it, we're probably going to need five subdivisions going uh, along the height. So in order to do that, I need to be back in object mode. And I'm going to go to Mesh Tools, Insert Edge Loop Tool, and this is still set up from when we used it previously, so I can click on that. And the job is a good one. Okay, so now what we need to do is try and match up the radius of each one of these rows. And what I would recommend doing, because it's symmetrical on the y-axis top to bottom, I would work on a couple of rows at a time. So, I'm going to make sure I'm in Edge Mode. I'm going to click my top edge and my bottom edge. Now I'm just going to do it one row at a time because I'm going to have a problem otherwise. So I'll just get my top edge. Right. Let's get into this nice and close so that I can see what I'm doing. I might even go to show, nope, not that one, the shading, wireframe on shaded. No, that's not what I'm looking for. X-ray, that's what I want. And it'll just make it, it a bit thicker, easy to see. So then I'm going to scale that in until it matches as close as I can get it to where that is. So you can see now, if I just zoom in on the corner here, see that pretty much matches up, which is what I'm going for. And I need to do that on each row. And I'm scaling from the center because I want this to scale uniformly and stay, that'll just keep it as a circle, which is kind of important. And that one there. Bring this one in to there. Next one. And I'm just matching up with the topology, with the mesh of the high poly version. Let's make sure everything is fan dozy Oh, that's nice. Okay, so if I put that back into object mode, 
and back into my perspective view. Perspective view, sorry. Right, so now if I flick on and off the visibility of the high poly, like this, the shape pretty much stays there. It's quite happy with that, which is what I'm looking for. That's good. That's real good. Okay. Right, next, we need to work on the top and the bottom. And this is going to be extruded, and then with some snapping, we're going to try and match things up, hopefully. So, let's get these faces on top. So I just need to make sure I've got all these going. Nice. Okay, and then I'm going to hit Control and E on the keyboard which is the keyboard shortcut for extrude, but you can also use the icon there, or there's an extrude in the modeling toolkit somewhere. So, you know, it's not like it's hard to find, but Control and E is my, my favoriteest way of doing it. Okay, and then, unhelpfully, the pivot's over here. So if I tried to, like, scale it, oh, actually, it would be fine, but I'm not going to scale on that axis because it freaks me out. So I'm going to press R on my keyboard, and I'm going to scale from there. And so I'm just going to scale him, and then move it down. I want to try and match up the height with what I've currently got. So I'm going to get in nice and close on this. I, whoops. I can always come back and change this later. But I want to get it as close as I can straight away. And that actually looks pretty spot on. So you can see I just, I'm almost tracing the high poly geometry. So that's my first extrusion. Then I'm going to hit Control and E to extrude again. This time I'll put my Move tool on and move it straight down. And I'm just trying now to match. There we go with where the the planks are. And then I'm just going to push that out. And again, I'm, I'm matching to get the curvature, like so. So I can now put that back into object mode. I'm happy with that that end. And again, if I just flick the visibility on and off you can now see that there's very little difference the only difference that is really popping out is um, the metal bands which is good that's what I want to see and I just need to repeat that process on the bottom Okay, so now my low poly barrel is basically finished as well. That was nice, wasn't it? That was easy. I like it when things are easy. Oh, that was lovely. Okay, so let's get naming. This one's going to be called low underscore poly underscore barrel. Lovely. And I'm going to add this one to its very own layer. Layer, create layer from selected. And I shall call this layer low poly l a w p a l y and save okay wicked that's now pretty much set up to do your texture baking with there is only one other thing that i think it's useful to do to get a cleaner normal matte bake or what something i found from my own experience anyway is to soften the edge of your low polygon mesh. So in order to do that, you just click on Mesh Display and you will see Soften Edge. And if I just hide the high poly, you'll see that it actually looks kind of weird. It looks a bit confused, but the uh, the harder edges should come back when we do the, the normal matte baking, hopefully. Okay, so in the next step, we will be um, texture baking. We're going to bake a normal map from the high poly geometry to the low poly geometry, which should look really good. So uh, I'll see you in that step.